I shed a tear for my dead homies. I know the love ain't real, I keep it still on me. Hard, heavy, couple nights, I've been real lonely. When I was on my grind, yeah, they switched on me. Can't for the scratch. I shed a tear for my dead homies. I know the love ain't real, I keep it still on me. Hard, heavy, couple nights, I've been real lonely. When I was on my grind, yeah, they switched on me. Can't for the scrap on me. Switched on me, no, don't put the scrap on me. I was down on my dick, niggas ain't had shit for me. I was alone, I stayed to myself. I don't give a fuck, just ashamed of myself, yeah. Ten bands, yeah, I lost it. Twenty bands, I can get it back, double crossing. I, I ain't got it in me, solid nigga, run with bosses. Well, I've been on my mind, I've been flossing, cashing out with the cost. I've been having I've been doing this shit, niggas out here be talking, I ain't new. This shit. I go super this shit, free baby boy, you lock yourself, you're ruthless shit Been spending money, I'm getting it back lately, you're abusing the shit Not wasting no time, I'm chasing this money, yeah, that's my mood, I'm lit Yeah, 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 you're now tuned into me, 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 me me and I was River Game on Wallow 267 right here. It's Gilly the King, a.k.a. Gilly the Nut. And we got my man, special guest, Tony the Closer. He on here to give you some game about, listen, man, this wholesaling re- re- real estate game. And y'all ready to get some real game. I'm talking about some G-A-M-E. He ready to give it to you. But, man, uh, let's get into this, man. Let's get into it. Oh, and that song was Pain by Bansom. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. let, let's get into I this, man. I felt this pain, too, a little yeah. bit. You know what I mean? Let's get into our first sponsor. Let's get into our first sponsor. Uh, Million Dollars Worth of Game, first of all, is presented by Barstool Sports. But our first sponsor is Mack Weldon. See, one thing, they got these comfortable clothes, man. Believe in smart design, premium fabric, uh, simple, sh- simple shopping. You know what I mean? And it's just like uh, Mack Weldon what? is the will be, how can I say Cause I tried it on and it was just beautiful, man. The clothing fit good. I like, you know, uh, the socks. Oh, they was just so. Cause got I like a good wa- feel to listen, it. Listen, the socks got a good feel to it. But me, I like to walk around raw, like with my feet, my dogs just out. You know what I'm saying? I like my feet to touch the ground, like you know. It just, it's just more of a personal feel <laughs> because I'm like to be one with the earth. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about everything they got, man. I'm talking about the underwear, their shirts, their hoodies. I'm talking about the sweat sweatpants, everything. You know what I mean? Sweatpants. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I just they like send me a good package uh, to slip in my drawers. Yeah, yeah. Because you 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 like to sleep in their sweatpants with no drawers on. That's another story. <laughs> that. But that, that is what it is. But Mac Weldon, one thing about it, they got top flight stuff. You know what I mean? They want you to be comfortable, man. And uh, if you don't like your first pair of underwear. You can keep them, you know what I mean? And they will, <laughs> That's beautiful. you keep them. Like, like, but listen, at the end of the day, I mean, you put them on, like, we don't want them back. Mark, like, no, we don't want them back, right? right? You, <laughs> you can keep them and they'll refund you, no question asked. So you can wear them and they be like, oh, damn, I don't really like how they feel. Uh, all right. Send your money back. They're going to refund you. And that's what's so good about Mac Weldon. But uh, mm-hmm. the, thing that's, the thing that's so good, right, is this, man. Mac Weldon really, really uh, value is loyal customers. And this is, this is what they created, right? Weldon Blue loyalty program. Create, mm-hmm. listen, number one, you create an account, it's totally free. Number, listen, you create an account, it's totally free. Mm-hmm. Level one, place an order for any amount and never pay for shipping again. Mm-hmm. Level two, once you purchase 200 worth of, you know, worth of product from Mark Weldon, not only will you continue to receive free shipping, but you will also start saving 20% mm-hmm. on every order you make for the next year. Now, listen, also, Damn, they got the motherfuckers up. That's so deep. <laughs> think about that. You don't have to. You got to think about that. You ain't got to pay for shipping like that. Think about it. you right. know shipping is a major thing. You ain't got to pay for shipping. Also, grants you access to new products before they are released to anyone else, mm-hmm. as well as free gifts added and future orders. But what you need to do, uh, you get twenty percent off, man. First order. MacWeldon.com slash game. MacWeldon.com slash game and get twenty percent off, man. Let's get mm-hmm. into this. Let's get into Million Dollars Worth of Game today, right? We got a special guest. You know, because everybody always in my DM. You know, Gilly, you give out relationship advice. You give, you give out the game to, to the women. You give out the game to the fellas. You give out the game to the youth. Mm-hmm. But, Gilly, you don't really give out no game on investments. You don't really. And, you know, I'm not no investment guru. So, you know, one thing I speak on is the shit that I know. You know, I don't try to front and speak on things that I don't know about. And I done got so many DMs expressing that people want game on, you know, I just came across this money. I want to invest. What can I invest in? So, you know, I talked to my man, Tony, Tony the Closer, you know what I mean? A.K.A. Tony Robinson, you know, ex-Seattle Seahawk, you know, came from what, what, what university he came out of? Uh, Winston Salem State University. Winston Salem State University. So you just like Gil, y'all y'all be going to these universities and colleges that nobody fucking know about. Well, I'm not. So, I'm wait, not. not like like like. Listen, listen, listen. Hold up, hold up. Penn State. 
Don't no I'm, state pen, nigga. I'm just saying, like y'all be fucking me up, like. Like why? Listen, I already knew if I didn't mess my ACL up, I was going to pro because I was going to a big college. He these first of all, first of all, first how the of all, fuck nigga, he you, get to the Seahawks? First of all, nigga, you was a masseuse in the penitentiary. What, what they got to do with that? When niggas come back from the oh, yard, you was massaging with, niggas, getting them right. What they got to do with me going you know, to Penn gotta, State? The nigga got, I got a tough game in the yard today. He come back, you take the cranks out of his neck and all that shit. You know that ass nigga. It was Shut some up. hell of an athletes in jail. I wouldn't just say that. It was some hell of an athlete. I heard you was working. I used to work the, uh, you know, you get a. Little uh, little tightness in their calf. You was in there, you know, working nigga calf. I wasn't up. no rubber in jail. Don't try to say I was a rubber. <laughs> you was a rubber shit. nigga. I wasn't no rubber in jail. You was a jail rubber. Shit. Don't try to say that. I was a no fucking You was a rubber. JR. They used to call you Junior. Where Junior at in my back? I know. Listen, I know I was going pro because y'all was, dudes be going to these colleges, man. And he's like, he said, once them sell them, like, Put some selling WSSU, baby, what? black college, Absolutely. HBCU oh, all oh, day. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah HBCU, HBCU, man. HBCU, a great bro. college. And actually, for you to make it to the NFL, yeah, from Winston Sell that's some major shit. So you you low key hating. But listen, man, my man was Shout out to all HBCUs. He played for the Seahawks from two thousand seven to two thousand nine. And then unfortunately, you know, something went down and he mm-hmm. was forced to go to prison, lost everything, and then came home and, you know, he never looked back. So he deals in real estate. So we just thought it would be real dope for him to come in. And, you know, tell his story. Tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey, bro. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you guys uh, bringing me out here. Uh, it's course. crazy because first and foremost, man, I'm right here from Philly. Absolutely. So, so uh, being back at the crib and uh, mad respect to what you guys built with this podcast, yes, man. Absolutely. So just, you know, before we get get it going, man, salute. Thank you. Um, crazy story, right? You know, obviously the sports background coming from Philly, you know what it is trying to get out of here. We, right. we we look at sports as the as a vehicle that's going to be able to help us get out. You know, get out the hood. Absolutely. And, and my family, uh, either drug background, or 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 working for somebody nine to five, and that just wasn't something that I wanted to have my my life and legacy be was you know either the drug route or uh, or uh, you know working at nine to five. And and I was actually thirteen years old where my uh, dad was in the military, moved me down south to North Carolina to keep me away from, I actually got caught on the corner with my cousin right. when, I was, when I was younger. So my aunts was like, they told on me. Yeah. And, and then my, ended up moving me down south with my, uh, with my dad. So just Well, sport- I can't really say, you, you can't really can't put see, snitching so on, your on your aunts. Like, they sniffed, they told on me. They, told they, was, on they me. did what they were supposed to do, Tony. <laughs> like, yeah, when yeah. I went to jail, Gil told on me. That's the hell out of here. <laughs> when you on. went to jail, you told on yourself because you were slow when the police ran you down ran and on. kicked but your fucking ankle story. from behind and you fell that's and scraped your chin up. But that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, you know, uh, obviously just sports was the way, right? Mm-hmm. My whole life I was working on, let me get out, let, let me use uh, football as a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, got lucky like you know most people we had an ambition to get there mm-hmm. but I actually had the opportunity to go suit up play you know play in the NFL and and uh ended up unfortunately getting hurt and when I got hurt uh just my life wasn't right mentally right mm-hmm. we we all we all you know think that success is the you know is going to solve whatever we got as far as like you know our our uh our background issues like mm-hmm. how you were you know raised as a child and I just had a lot of un- unresolved issues which which for me was all anger mm-hmm. uh and, and it, it just it cost me a lot in my life man so uh back in uh 2017 actually um i ended up going to jail for uh 63 days uh for a domestic violence charge uh found out that my, my girlfriend at the time was cheating lost my cool and 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 the shit just went downhill really and that was where you know for me hitting rock bottom you know what i mean like right. you, you go from being a person that everybody respects Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you get what you know for the major mark, like hey, you you, you putting your hands on a woman, mm-hmm. like so. A lot of people, you know, just kind of fell back off me. Uh, and and for me, it was like that humbling moment, you know, really to, to just try to realign and address first and foremost, like where I've been at my my past. I needed to go and address my past, doing the counseling and stuff, stuff we don't talk about a lot right. in our community, to right? See, right. To see to see what activated that 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 that. That feeling that made you think that that was cool to put your hands on a woman. I grew up in the I, I grew up in a domestic violence house. Okay. So so you know you know I well, everything that I tried to not uh, end up doing, I ended up emulating exactly what I seen in the household basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 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 what happened in 2017 was was the humbling most humbling thing for me because I had money. Okay. And 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 for me, every time I got in trouble, I had money. So the money was always able to cover whatever my bullshit was. Right. 
Um, and, and this was the first time that money wasn't going to do it. Uh, the severity of the charges and the way they had, had charged me, I had a $1.2 million bond. Okay. So, uh, so you ain't had that much money. I ain't had that much fucking money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 so it got real. And, and uh, you know, finally, 63, day, 63 days after being in, I was able to bond out. And, uh, and, and that was just kind of like getting out and spending all my money just trying to get back home and, and being broke now. Not having money wasn't gonna be, you know, money wasn't gonna be there. I, I'm, I'm having to file for bankruptcy. I get out. I can't afford to pay my house no more. Can't pay, you know, my nice car, all my mm -hmm. shit that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't afford nothing no more. Right. And, and this is where I kind of hit that uh, that moment where I knew I had to do something different. Mm -hmm. I always been a person that was kind of like, you know, everybody knew me because of the sports background. Uh, my dad had been in the real estate industry for about 23 years at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, you know, I had already in my life had been consuming this real estate information. Right. Uh, but but this is when I was like, for the first time I really started really focusing in because I was losing my house. Right. So because I was losing my house, I was trying to figure out how I can actually save my house because I had equity in it. Right. And for people that don't know what equity is, it's like, yo, I actually, uh, my, I owed 190,000, but my house is worth 300. So I had like $100,000 plus worth, worth of equity uh, that was in there. Well, I didn't know that uh, if you didn't make those payments that you lose the fucking house and the equity. Yeah. So when the when the bank took my foreclosed on my property, I not only lost all the money that I had been putting and paying down into my house, you know, I lost the house too. Right. And it made me want to figure out like ways, it basically made me start trying to figure out ways to reverse engineer and keep that from happening to other people because I knew that people foreclose every day because mm -hmm. life happens. Right, absolutely. And, and when, when life happens, you got to be able to figure out ways to kind of like move around and maneuver. And, and I started doing research and, and it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a, a niche in real estate called wholesaling. And, and this is dope because a lot of people are gonna like this because you don't have to have no money because I was fucking broke, I, no credit, because I just filed a bankruptcy trying to you know trying to save my house. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up you know and what people don't know about bankruptcy is that like I try to use bankruptcy to save my house, but motherfucker you gotta make payments to to once you're in bankruptcy you still gotta make payments. So if you can't make the payments they they're gonna take it anyway. So that's right. how I end up losing my house. And and while this whole process was happening, I started realizing that the way you can contact other people that were kind of in that same position that I was in at the time, I could actually put that property under contract and sell it before the actual foreclosure happened. Mm -hmm. So now I was taking and saving people from messing up their credit and I was able to get paid in the same token. Okay, so you was hustling, hustling. I had to hustle. Yeah, okay. so I, I literally took, it's, it's a little it's a little loophole, but you don't need a real estate license. You don't have to go to school. So this is what really like, you know, for people like your credit, your background, none of that stuff is, is relevant because what's really gonna be important is just understanding the strategy because it's really something that, uh, like they don't teach us this in school, right? Mm -hmm. But but because of my, my dad's uh, background, I was able to get access to stuff that was gonna really put us in a position that will definitely put me in a position to go make money without having money. Yeah. Well, you know what? Me and you got something in common, man. We both been locked up for domestic violence before. Yeah, domestic violence is real, fam. It definitely is, you know. And to all the all the youngins out there, man, I don't know what, what your situation was, but I know I was 19 years old. I was a sophomore in college, you know, um, playing basketball college athlete you feel what I'm saying uh you know when you're a college athlete you got it's, it's mandatory that you live on campus mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying yep or unless you got an apartment off of campus but it's still a, a college you know facility but it's just off of campus so but my but my college was was maybe 35 45 minutes away from Philly so we we play a school you know I decide to fuck it. I'm gonna go home because I moved out of my mama crib at 18. You feel what I'm saying? I I never been back, so I decided I was gonna go home. And uh, I get there, I put my key in the door, I go to open the door. All the chain locks was on. What the fuck is going on? Okay, she she secured herself in this motherfucker. This is when I was in jail. Uh. Yeah. No, this wasn't when you was I in was jail. I was in jail. No, this was 96. You wasn't in jail. I went to jail in 96. What month? No, this was, uh, might have been 95. Might have been one of them years. I don't remember, quite quite remember. And, uh, you know, 
I tried to open that door and that chain lock was on and you know, I ain't think nothing. You open the door. You know, that door opened and there was a nigga in there. What? Yeah. Wow. You, you. Yeah. You, was, you. It was a nigga in there, man. <laughs> you know. When, what was he doing? What did he look like? No, I remember the nigga name. Shout out to Minky. Yeah. You know did mean? he get money? Yeah, Minky anything? popped my bitch back in the day. Did he get money? Or anything? I don't know if he got money because I ain't checked the pimp. I told him. I I'm told just him. Saying, I told him exit the building. I told him exit the building. Before I, before, I, before I blaze him down. You feel what I'm saying? How did you feel? You was you was. I was hurt, man. I was enraged, man. You know, I, I, I you know, you know Tyra. Yeah, I know. You know, cheese mom. You know, I, I suplexed her on the glass table, man. You know what I mean? I ain't, you know, that ain't something I'm proud of, but it's the truth. You know what I mean? I seen that nigga in my crib. I threw an arm over top of my joint, picked up by panties. You know what I mean? Shit, that's what it was back then, you know? And unfortunately, I didn't have to do no jail time. I got, got locked, locked up. up though. Yeah, I got locked up, but I got bailed out, you know, the next day. And, you know, she came to court, her and her mom came to court. They dropped all the charges. You feel what I'm saying? So, but, you know, it was just <clears throat> being in the heat of that moment, man. That, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You can do one thing mm -hmm. in the heat of that moment. That uh, that Y'all was both paying for the crib? Uh, yeah, no, you know, nigga, you know I was coming home doing armed robberies. Nigga, you know you, what I was you, doing, so nigga. You paid Fuck anything. Wrong. I was, you, you know I used did to come home from anything? college. We would go on route, did you, did buck you pay some for shit, anything, and then i go, yeah. Oh, all right. You feel what so I'm saying? So that was your crib? Yeah. So, you know, it was ours. We lived together. But, I'm, not, you know, I'm not saying that to, uh, to get around it. I'm just saying, like, what advice, I'm saying, what, what message do y'all have for the young people, people men, men of all ages, why this domestic violence ain't cool? What message I mean, you? at the end of the day, man, you got to learn. You just got to, you just got to, I, I acted out of emotion. You know what I'm saying? S solely off of emotion. You know what I mean? It was a, it was an ego thing. It was a man thing. Bitch, you got a nigga in my house. Mm -hmm. That ego gets you every time, fam. Bitch, is you serious? You, 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 like you brought a nigga to the spot? Like, bitch, if you was gonna suck a dick, you couldn't suck a dick out the crib. Like, you, it was just, and it was emotions. It was more of a, I can't believe you. Like, would the pain be different if it was in the car and not in the house? Yeah, the pain definitely would have been different. It wouldn't have been no different for me, fam. And, I ain't even going. Uh, um, for, me, <laughs> for me, it would have been different because I probably, it was just opening that door and seeing a nigga sitting on my couch, man. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Minky. Whatever that nigga name was, yeah, you fuck my bitch, it's cool. You know what I mean? You you got one on me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, shit, you know, niggas niggas fuck your bitch, man. It's, the, the bitches get fucked every day, man. You know what I mean? That's just what what it is. So shout out to Minky. Yeah, you you don't you probably one of the few niggas in in life that got something up on me. Congratulations, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, I acted off from off emotions. What? The you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I did something I shouldn't have done. Something that I'm to this day, you know, I'm not proud of. Yeah. You know, this is not something that, you know, that I'm, you know, I, I, I weed my flag. This is something one of the actually, this one of the things that I actually regret yeah. doing in life. I wish I would have never. I wish I'd have just, okay, bitch, it's cool. Walked out. Do me a favor. Can you turn that off, please? I wish I'd have just said, you know, it's cool. You know, it turned around and walked back out, and you know got my thoughts together before I reacted, but it was just a bam. It was like, you feel what I'm saying? It just was a reaction. And you know, mm -hmm. it, it's funny, it's not a laughing matter, but you know, you know me and Tyra, we joke about it today. She knew yeah. she was wrong, I knew I was wrong. You know, we live to see another day. You know what I'm saying? And, and just for me, it was like, it was a fucked up time, you know, cause, because you, you don't realize, you know, how much you fucked up until you sitting in that cell. Wow. You know, when I was sitting in that <laughs> cell, I said, man, all these women out here, man, mm. I'm a fucking player, man. You feel what I'm saying? I should have said, okay. I should have turned around and said, okay, bitch. You might, you might win some, but you just lost one. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And turned around and walked out and, 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 you know, but I didn't. And unfortunately, you know, I caught a domestic violence charge, but I ain't never had to do no so, time for it because, you know, she, <clears throat> they dropped the charges. All right, so so as y'all cheated on, do the the person caliber of the person that they cheated on do that matter? <laughs> nah, I didn't even check the caliber of the person. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, listen, man, I ain't never even told this side of my story, right? Okay. So check this, right? So 
how how I got in my situation because your, yours was like yo I I feel that mm -hmm. like in the crib mm -hmm. for me my shorty was living with me mm -hmm. um and and at the time my phone was acting up so I had to borrow her phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yo! Did you was you borrowing her phone? Cause some people say they got to borrow the phone just in case to join out. Nah, oh, let for me real, fam. Phone, like, 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 no, no bullshit. So we, I had to just borrow her phone just to make a call. I was actually calling AT and T to have them check my joint. Right. So I'm using her phone, and uh, damn, I ain't never told nobody this joint, yo. So I'm using her phone, and and a text message coming from her cousin, her cousin Courtney. So I'm like, yo, Ann, you know what I'm saying? Like, Courtney just text you. And she come from out the other room on a blaze, like, real quick. Oh, she came out that bitch like Carl Lewis, huh? Like, heart rate high. You can just kind of see she was looking uncomfortable. And I was just on the speakerphone, like, kind of just waiting on the, you know what I mean? Uh, uh -huh. The the people, AT&T to, to, to come in. But she sat there and was just watching me. Right. So I'm like, I'm like. Something ain't right. Something ain't, you know what I mean? Like, and as right. men, we know when something ain't right. right. Yeah, just so, like as women, they know when something ain't right. So you know, I, 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 you know, I'm like, man, let me, let me go through this phone, man. Like, and it's the, unwritten, <laughs> it's the unwritten rule, man. Like, you don't go through nobody's <laughs> phone, phone, man. Like, you, because if you go through that joint, you gonna see something you don't want to see. see. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I end up opening up the phone, looking at what, what, uh, what, what Courtney had sent her first. Like, I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, that ain't Courtney. This ain't Courtney, yo. I go through the phone and I'm like, yo, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, you know, she's sending pictures, like I'm seeing nudes and shit. She posing on my Damn. on my on my furniture and Ooh, shit. On like, the furniture. Like, she on your couch sending back shots. Lord have mercy. Yeah, like she tooting anything on the key. She tooting anything and, even and, on the And couch. then I, I go to look and I see the phone number was a Philly number. And where was you living at? I'm in North Carolina, fam. You always living in North Carolina? I'm in North Carolina. Where is she from? She from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. So, so somebody from Philly was blazing her. And it wasn't just like that. Like, I wish it was just like that. Mm -hmm. like, you know what I'm saying? So so I go through the I go through the the joint. I'm looking and I'm just scrolling through the shit. And then I peeped to who it was that that she was actually fucking messaging. Mm -hmm. and, what and year was this? This was 2017. Oh shit. Oh. So so this is January 2017, like January 11th. Like I remember this shit. Yeah. Like, like certain shit you just don't forget. Mm -hmm. So so I'm going through all all the joint, and I'm like I'm already steaming hot just off the, like I'm looking at like my shorty like sending, posing and sending nudes right. and all that. Then like I see something that really even like threw me off was the fact that it was like a a, a Philly number. And you from Philly? And I'm like, hold up. And, and you know I'm from Philly. Yeah, and then- But people can have numbers from anywhere. Nah, fam, this just wasn't anybody though. Right. This was like, you know what I mean? Like, I fuck with the ball music and everything, so like- Oh, like, the fuck up! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, hold on, oh, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, wait. It's only, it's only a certain amount of rappers. I know I didn't, hold on. I didn't blaze her, so I know hold you ain't talking about me. <laughs> hey, yo. You not saying what I think, come on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I ain't many niggas I listen to from Philly, so you know what I mean. You so, know. Wait, wait, who you listen to from Philly? Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> do you still listen to him? Whoever it was it? Nigga, shit hot, fam. Like his shit blazing. So you know what I mean. Y'all can do some deductive reasoning and figure out. You know what I mean. How this nigga in Philly? You know what I mean. Oh, like, how this nigga in Philly? How this nigga in Philly, man? And then, Meek. <laughs> is you talking about Meek though? Because Meek will blaze a lot of bitches out here. Meek, fuck my bitch, bro. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Meek, you out here Meek, fucking up households, Meek. Hold it, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> what a black story, bitch. You... Oh, nigga, I know that cat. Don't <laughs> 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 be my soul. Oh, my God. Please. Oh, my Lord. Yo, hold on. Hold <laughs> Meek Millie. How you know it was him? Is you 100% sure it was Meek Blazer, your bitch? Is no. you 100% sure? 
Dog, like it, it took me a minute to listen to my fan music again, dog. I ain't even gonna but lie. But you listen man. to it again, it's cool. I fuck with him, so it, it shit fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you that, know, uh, you ain't charged. Ne- ne- him. Never had nothing with him, like, cause you know, oh shit. God. You know what I mean? That's what. That's what. That's what. You know, that's the game. Damn. But man, but I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you what fucked me up though, which which, which was like really the trigger though. Like what really really triggered me though. I was reading some conversations that was like taking place that had like you know like it was disrespectful to my child because she was also like keeping my kid while I was doing work. Right. So that was like really what triggered me. Like I seen some real major like disrespect when it came to my child. So you know, I it, it just kind of like you know you talk about like you look at the fact I'm like seeing my girl ass up on in, in pictures. You know what I mean? Like some shit that I'm like, damn, you ain't even sending this shit to me. Right. Then I'm looking, I see like it's a Philly number. Then I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Out of all the niggas in the world, it's like, get the fuck out of here. Damn. Let's hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought <laughs> I was finished. Damn. That's crazy. I'm Absolutely kidding. crazy, man. Damn. Shit. And then, uh, you know what's fucked up, though? Like, so I'm locked up, right? And, 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 and like a dumbass, I'm still like kind of emotional about Shorty. So I'm like still reaching out and like trying to like talk to her or whatever. And then one of my boys was like, yo, uh, it was like right, right when I was locked up, it was a CIAA weekend happening. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? So CIAA weekend happened and my man hit me, he was like, bruh, she in the section with boy right now. Like, she, you know, she kicking it with him. I'm in jail. And this is where like it, it really made me have a mind, a mindset shift with like how I even like rock with women like in, in that Absolutely. level. Absolutely. Because like I'm locked up, fucking million plus dollar bond, and she living her life like nothing happened and still rocking. So, you know, like for me, that was something that was important just to kind of get that, you know what I mean? Cause to make it, you grasp a sense damn. of, yo, I'm tripping, man. Let me man yep. the fuck up, man. Yep. So I had to eat it. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. And like I said, man, ain't nobody immune to that, man. But niggas, women get fucked every day, man. And that's not on you. That's what she chose to do. You can't, you can never, you can never, you know, be in control of what a woman control, you know, decide to do. So, you know, for for all the guys out there, you know, when you find out a rapper or entertainer or a basketball player or a regular nigga named Minky is fucking your bitch, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, man, just take that deep breath. Because at the end of the day, yeah, okay, you 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 already you already lost. Mm-hmm. The, the loss is already put in, and nigga spiked your bitch like the punch Damn. at the party. You Damn. feel what I'm saying? So you already lost. You feel what I'm saying? Now, so now, you... now don't make it a double loss. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Just by the graces of God, you know, my, my peoples knew that they was out of fucking pocket like a pistol on a robbery. So they <clears> dropped the <throat> charges. You feel what I'm saying? But I still was out of pocket. I still was wrong. But they understood that, damn, that, that, that was some deep shit what I did. You feel what I'm saying? Obviously, it ain't, it ain't always the same because his folks didn't feel like that. She didn't say, damn, I got caught. Damn, I really fucked up. No. She said, damn, I got caught. She took the ass whooping and then powdered the bruises up and still was in VIP. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. A lot of you do. So, a lot of women is is going to be barred. Their men is going to be barred them from getting in the dream chases uh, section. <laughs> <laughs> they can have dreams, but they can't have dreams around dream chases. So a lot of y'all women out there, I'm sorry, you, the party's hey. over. When we get back to regular life, y'all not going to be loud in the DC section. Hey, yo, listen, man, listen. I'm telling y'all, fellas, man, if you out there, man. Take the L, fam. Just take the just L, take man. Take the L, hey, man. Just take the L, yo. It it was not worth it. And then at the end of the day, like what was the toughest part for me is that you know, unlike your situation where they was trying to drop charges, Shorty was trying to come at me like she just didn't fucking fuck the ball. Right, right. I'm like, right. yo, like I mean, she was on like, yo, mm. talking to the DA, everything. It was a whole. It was like she was trying to get me to sit down. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep that thought in mind. Let's go into our next sponsor, brother. Our next sponsor is, well, you know, listen, let me tell you something. I don't like to talk about this to certain guys because guys like Gilly can't handle it. Manscaped.com. One thing about the lawnmower 3.0, it's, 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 it became a special friend to me because I used to use razors, and I used to use razors, and I used to cut my sack. Sometimes I would cut and get a little drip. Ah, you know, it, it hit the water, and you see that red thing hit the ground. You'd be like, oh, shit, and it'd be nip. You'd be, fuck up. Ah! You know how you be you shaving, mm-hmm. wah, wah, wah. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, and then sometimes it grow back hair bumps and all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. When you clean it up down there, because I like to uh, 
I like to take care of my whole my project down there, my my whole my my, my stuff down there. My, and uh, Manscaped, I'm talking about that the LED light. You can see everything. So when you hitting it, you can see like you back up. You're like, oh, it's clean. It's like just imagine having a lawnmower with a light on it, and you're doing it at nighttime or whatever <laughs> you want to do. You cut the light off sometimes. I did cut the light off a couple times. Let me cut the light off when I'm cleaning my. I heard you. I heard you had April do your back, and she did a whole landing no, strip all the way down to your ass. Is no, she true? never done it. You were like, <laughs> like a little bit rug. One thing about listen, and the thing about it is that you get twenty and listen twenty percent off. Right, you get twenty percent off on free shipping when using the code million. You see what I'm saying? Use the code million at manscaped.com. You get twenty percent off. But right now, for a limited limited time, listen, subscribers get two free gifts: a Shea travel bag. Right, it's thirty nine dollar value in a patent high performance anti shape anti what is that shifting uh sh sh uh what's that called when ch chafing uh -huh. chafing so you you know that once you join on be all down there you know what I mean uh, -huh. uh you look like your nickname was chafe but that's another story <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you get the manscape boxer briefs right this is listen this is a perfect package for your perfect package you know what I mean I'm not saying nobody perfect package I'm talking about my perfect well, package. Okay. I'm not saying that, uh -huh. but listen, get 20% off of free shipping. Uh, use the code million at manscape.com. Okay, listen, hold on. This 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 episode is so juicy. I just want you to stay right where you're at with it. Let me do this. This this episode of Barstool Sports is sponsored by uh, VPN Express. Express VPN, right? Being stuck at home these days, you probably don't think much about the internet privacy on your home network. Shit. Fire up incognito mode on your browser and no one can see what you got going on, right? No, wrong. Even in incognito mode, your online activity can still be traced. Yep. Even if you clear your browsing history, your online activity can still be traced. So ExpressVPN, make sure that your ISP, your internet service provider, can't see what sites you visit. It protects your privacy. You feel what I'm saying? So instead of your internet connection being rerouted, and, and, and you, you, instead of your internet connection showing everything that you're doing is being rerouted through e through ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your data with the best in-class en en encryptions. So your information is always protected. It's important to protect your information, man. It's important to protect all of your information. Use the internet with confidence from your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. ExpressVPN has you covered on every device. Simply tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is the fastest and most trusted VPN on the market, and it's rated number one by CNET, Wired, and The Verge, and it can, and can and countless more. So I know, uh, too, you know, she got ExpressVPN on on all the laptops, laptops and tablets that we got in the crib because she chooses to, you know, protect all of our interests. So uh, make What's sure. What's Tootie looking at on there? I don't know. Tootie might be looking at some porn on it. That's why she probably don't <laughs> want me to double back. And you know what I mean? She might be looking at big black hammers <laughs> on that joint. <laughs> yeah, I mean porn, B -B porn called B BBH, big black hammers. <laughs> BC. <laughs> so, <laughs> so protect your on t online activity today with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com backslash million. And you can get an extra three months for free. You hear me? expressvpn.com backslash millions and you get three months for free man make sure y'all visit expressvpn right now and protect everything that you got going on come on tony we got to get back into this man this is juicy man so so you so you find out that flamers is flaming your bitch meek millie god damn that's a hard one that's a hard one to smile that's like that's damn near like you find out drake uh, Man, it's, 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 and, and a, when you a, a fan dish. too, oh like I'm God, talking about, you like when you a fan, go, I'm like, hold on, who are you thinking about? All the times y'all was in the car, you banging the shit, you driving, she in the front she seat, she singing it with you. You like, you all that shit just going through your mind. You like, you rotten bitch. Like, <laughs> you was actually singing his song with his dick as a microphone. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> like, damn, crazy. I know that was a hurt piece, man. Crazy, and I, I know. Just being a man, man, you know, I know it was hard keeping your composure. I know that's probably why you went to jail because it probably was extremely hard to keep your composure. And then, and then you know what, make you know, but listen, I'm going to keep it all the way around. I don't know if it's your baby mom, I don't know if it's your ex-girlfriend, I don't know. I'm just going to say this, though. You know what makes her RB, and that's a rotten bitch? Because she know you from Philly. 
Mm-hmm. Like out of all the niggas you could he fuck. You. You fuck a nigga from my home town. Mm. Keep it real. That made it hurt even a little bit more. Yo, come on. You already know. You seen that right? 267, 215 area like, code, dog, nigga. Like, I'm like, come on, fam. Like, out of all the motherfucking places. And then and then it'd be somebody that, like, yo, I really respect the music. You know what I mean? Like, fuck with his music. I'm like, damn. How long did you not listen to Meek? Nah, I ain't never, I ain't like that, fam. Like, it was, for me, real talk, I was like, I charge it to her, you know what I mean? I'd have cut Meek the fuck off for two years. <laughs> you're, on two year, you're on a two year probation, nigga, you blaze my bitch. So what if somebody was playing it, somebody jumped in the car and they playing it? I'll slap the shit out of him. Turn that shit off, man. Nah, man. I don't want to hear nothing that's M right now. He blazed my bitch, man. Nah, man, I, yeah. I ain't even, I ain't even take it like he ain't that, fam. To the game. Nah, you I still I, supported him. Yeah, hell yeah, still in my, in my, in my uh, top playlist right now. You know what hey, I mean? That's, that's some real shit, man. What's your favorite song by Meek Mills? Don't, don't do that. Hey, Fuck. come on, why don't you fucking with me, dog? <laughs> hey, come on, dog. <laughs> hey. His mother, you a rotten ass nigga. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> He said, man, that's fucked, that's fucked up. up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, man, um, give us some more game about the real estate. Like, let me ask you a question. So, so say if you're a person, right, and you're not really financially blessed, right, and you want to get into real estate. Say, you know, you might got good credit. You might. How is it a way that you could get into real estate if you don't got money? Is that is that possible? 100%. See, most people, when they think real estate, they think I gotta have a real estate license or I gotta be a realtor, right? Well, there's this strategy called wholesaling. Really, you don't need to have a real estate license. Don't have to be a realtor. Uh, don't need to have any credit at all because you're not gonna be using any credit. And essentially, the whole process of wholesaling uh, is that you're gonna find a, a, a property owner that needs to sell their house fast, like somebody that might be foreclosure, have a lien on their property. Uh, like maybe somebody's elderly that passed away. We look for like properties that might be distressed or uh, vacant, abandoned properties like that. And we, we go target the homeowners of these properties that might be out of state, found them like whatever, and we can go put them under contract. Now the deal is like, what we do is we gotta find, we put them under contract. Our contract has some language in it that basically we got a 30 day uh, window that we can shop this contract around. It's all legal. All legal, 100% legal. No, like you, yo, it's only two states that have any type of uh, legislation against it, and that just means that you would have to get a license in those states. So Illinois and Oklahoma make you have to have an actual license to assign the contract. But all the other states, you cool. Every everywhere else is free game, and this is what like you know, like all the white people have been doing this for years, but they ain't teach us this part, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is where like it's it's been a game changer for a lot of people because what's happened is like you, you got a lot of people now find out, yo, you mean to tell me I can get in real estate without having to have hundreds of thousands of dollars or or, or credit or or have to be licensed or I don't have to have a college degree and I can do it virtually. So the, the dope part about this y'all is like, I got I, I got a training right now called Rona Proof, mm -hmm. which I teach people how to do this stuff literally from the crib. So as long as you got a laptop and a cell phone and internet connection, mm -hmm. you, you can make money anywhere in the country. I can sh I, and I do trainings every Sunday at three o'clock where I break down the game for how people can actually get started doing the process. But the process is, is essentially, you find these, uh, these people that either got vacant houses or they, they about to lose their house or whatever, and we put those properties under contract and then we sell the contract for more money to a cash buyer. So it's just a, like, a, it's a little hustle. It's like buying a pair of J's uh, for a hundred dollars and you know they're gonna be exclusive and then you sell them to somebody else for a buck 50 and they worth, you know, 300 plus dollars or whatever. Okay. And so so the whole idea is we wanna go find these properties and, and like I teach the strategy, how you find these properties, how we find them, how we market them off and then how we find the cash buyers because the reality is it's a lot of investors out here right now that's looking for properties that they don't wanna go out and do all the legwork, the hard work to go find these so properties. You just doing, you just doing a lot of legwork. We, we do all the, well, I'm doing the type work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you don't have to really go out. So we just really, from the computer, man, you, you go through, you just start call, you know, we, I'm gonna show you a way like in the systems where we send out a text message to, to the homeowners. We, we basically look up all the information on, on the homeowner. We send them a text message and a call and just ask them if they wanna uh, sell their house. And the people that we know that like fit the description of what we wanna talk to, we, we put those properties under contract and then we go to those cash buyers, those investors that we know in the marketplace looking for uh, these properties. So the crazy part is right now, right? The middle of a pandemic, most people don't know how to make money. 
But right now, what, what's happening? You look at the stock market, everybody getting involved in it. Why? Because they're like, oh, it's good deals right now. I can go buy these these uh, these uh, stocks for the low. Same thing in real estate right now. It's a lot of real estate being impacted. People, you got 30 million people that file for unemployment, right? Mm -hmm. So you got, you got all these people that's going to not be able to pay their rent, their mortgage, and all this other stuff. So what's going to happen? We know we got all these people that can't, that can't pay that. They shit going to get behind. They're going to have to do something. Right. So it's going to be a whole lot of properties that's going to hit the market based off the fact that people now can't afford to keep their homes. And it's going right. to be for our, like the investors, the people that know how to know the strategy, you can make a bag. Literally right. right now during this pandemic, my students have already hit over a million dollars for 2020. Let me ask you a question. What's the mm -hmm. website? Ronaproof.com, R-O-N-A proof.com. Okay. And you come there and you telling me, if I'm Johnny Nobody, I'm sitting in the crib. I live in, uh, I live in- uh, Dubuque, Iowa. I live in Dubuque, Iowa. I live in um, uh, Utah, Arizona. Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. Salt Lake City, Utah. I could get on my computer, go to your program and it's game time. So listen, I, I give a 10 step strategy all, and it's 100% free. So the, the training that I do is free. So I teach people this stuff for free, free, free game. Mm -hmm. I literally teach you how you get started. So if you don't know anything about the real estate game, if you like brand new, new, don't know shit, I'm gonna tell you from point A to point B, how, I'm gonna walk you from being a newbie to how you actually can go close a deal and get paid in the training. And this is every Sunday at three o'clock. And, and for anybody that like, here's the crazy part, cause people think like, man, I live in New York, I live in whatever. Like, yo, I'm doing deals in Houston, Texas, uh, Baltimore, uh, be, even in Philly, right? Uh -huh. I'm doing deals all over, the, over, all over the place virtually. I ain't even having to be there. I'm doing. I'm in North Carolina in the country, uh -huh. but but you can do all this stuff virtually. So no matter where you live at, you only had to do it in the exact market that you live at. Uh -huh. As long as you got a computer, I'm gonna show you guys all the systems and everything else, so you can literally get this bag. And the average wholesale assignment fee, just so when people like you know understand how like how lucrative this can be. The average wholesale assignment fee is anywhere between twelve and fifteen thousand. Oh, that's beautiful. Huh. So so like you know. For so you do four or five houses a year. It's, it's, it's people's salary. The average black male makes $34,000 a year mm. on the uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Mm. I, how, I got, how old is they? The person you talking about, the average black male. So so that's that's just like 30 something years old. That's that's what you know the, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics says, right. Right? right? So so the black woman makes less than that. It's like 31 to 20, 29 thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So I'm teaching people how to actually get paid more money than you can slaving for a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So my whole idea is what I want to do is I want to put you know the the entrepreneur back into our community. Mm -hmm. Like so many of us have have been have been brainwashed into believing like the only way that they can make money is working for somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm teaching people how they can get paid on their own. I literally had a student uh like last week Derby, she made 103,000 off one deal. Mm. Nigga, I'll be on there Sunday. <laughs> yeah. That's no bullshit. Another young Matter guy. Fact, I'm called. I need personal lessons. How much yeah. you charge? Hey, yo, <laughs> another young boy, 21 years old in Atlanta. Greg made ninety thousand six hundred and seventy nine dollars in his first deal. Mm, mm, mm. And, no, and Greg those, happy as shit. Greg, Greg, like, like I, I, have, I, I fuck around and post. Greg, Greg said, "Hey, bro, I still live in uh, East Side Atlanta, so take that shit down, fam." He's like, "Take that down." I can't. <laughs> Greg said, "Nigga, I ain't moved yet. You want niggas in my house? <laughs> trying to get niggas be coming. climbing in Greg, Gregory. <laughs> Where's that ninety six thousand? Yeah, <laughs> turn up. Yeah, uh -huh. but, but like that, you know, those, are, those are like the high ones, right? So that's, yeah. that's not a normal deal, but right. that's like an exceptional deal. Absolutely. But the average deal size is anywhere between 12 and 15,000. So if you get people that, that you know, right now are struggling to even make ends meet, they looking for the Trump stimulus pack. Right. Join my Rona Proof train. I'm gonna stimulate your whole economy with some game that can change your life. You gonna stimulate their life. Stimulate Absolutely. your life, that's a fact. That's some dope shit, man. Mm -hmm. That's some dope now, shit. Now, where's that at again? www.ronaproof.com, R-O-N-A-P-R-O-O-F.com. I wanna teach people how to get Rona Proof. And the reason why I, I even use that URL because we know what's relevant right now. So right. people don't wanna go inside somebody's house. I'm doing, I'm showing people how to do all this from the crib. Right. So you ain't, even, yo. So what's, what's, the, what's the great thing about it is you can <laughs> still go to work, you can still get your regular income, and then you could come home and hustle. Yep. So you ain't, it ain't, you ain't. Couple, couple hours a day doing right. research. This yep. is a research game. Yep, yep. Listen. <laughs> Yo, you got do you got template contracts on there to show them what type of contract? Listen, the whole everything. Like, Damn. listen, Sunday, y'all, Ronaproof.com. Every Sunday, three o'clock. I'm gonna be on there. When I, when I tell you some craziness, I had a I had a boy uh, live in Jersey, as a matter of fact. Uh, just did a podcast with him the other day. Not, still work his nine to five. He he actually makes eighty five thousand a year at his at his regular job. He started my training in July of last year. Dude has made one hundred and seventy thousand dollars year to date. 
um, from July to now, mm. just closed fifty thousand dollars last week in the middle of a pandemic. Mm. So this is what I'm telling people right now: like you got to be able to adapt with the times. Absolutely. Like everybody sitting here right now, looking at Netflix and and, and really bullshitting, where you can be coming out this joint at the end of this uh, pandemic on a different level. Right. And I'm trying to level people up, and this is like why I give this for free. Right. Like you know, people are like yo Tony, what's in it for you? Well, I've been making so much impact in the community that naturally I've been getting back my 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 wins just on like how I've been showing love and and, and just empowering our people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want people to really know like yo, it's more than what we've been what we've been uh uh, been given like as far as information mm -hmm. like the information has been hidden for so long so right. we i just wanted to really show like yo it's a way that you can legit go out here implement some shit that like is free you don't have to have a license you don't have to have a bunch of money you don't have to have credit so you don't have an excuse and then if even with the contract yo if, if you say you put that joint on the contract because i know somebody like damn what if i put it on the contract and i can't get rid of it you can cancel the contract when like everything in the contract and everything is to our benefit. Mm -hmm. So we got literally a 30 day inspection period that if we can't sell that John, we can cancel the contract. But before we cancel it, we will go back to the, the homeowner and be like, hey, look, we, the, look, based off the numbers that we got of that, those numbers not gonna work. So we gonna have to renegotiate if you still wanna sell it. So now we, we still got other options other than just canceling the contract. So people gotta understand, like you just get, you need to know the game. Like once yeah. you know the game, you gotta learn, learn the rules to the game, then after that, you can't nobody mess with you. That's what's up. Well, let me ask you a question. So you was in prison for, uh, no, you was only there for 63 days. Jail, I ain't hit prison, so, I was yeah, in jail. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you was at the county. County. You was only there for 63 days, so you ain't had no jobs. Shit, no, jo no yeah, job, but, but jail, jail was enough for me though, fam. Yeah. yeah, how did you, you gotta have a job in jail. You, you know, Wallow, Wallow had multiple jobs in jail. I just uh, found out man. about a job he, he had that lying. I didn't know. He no. lying on me, you Nigga, ready lie. Which, uh, hold on. Who, who you talk to now? Uh, I, I, I talked to your brother, Troy. <laughs> Troy wasn't in jail with me. Yeah, but he, you know Troy did that bit with you and he, he put me up on game. He said, uh, he called me cuz, I ain't never tell nobody this. He fucking lying on me, I didn't die, he lying. How you going? Wallow used to make jailhouse liquor. Man, get the fuck out, I ain't never make Yes, you did, nigga. Man, if you, listen, man. He was on. a star tender. What? Wow. Nigga was a star tender in jail, you hear me? You just be lying yeah, on no, me. No, nigga, you was a mixologist, nigga, in prison, nigga. Your brother Troy called me and told me, told me for all the gangster niggas you used to make thug passion. You fucking lying, huh? man. For all, the, for all the spicy niggas in jail, you know how they got sex on the beach? Yeah. That nigga made sex in the cell. <laughs> he had a drink, his specialty, he had a drink called laying on the lawn with Sean. You fucking lying on me, man. I'm like, you want a mixologist in jail? No, I don't even know what that is. I don't, <laughs> nigga, I don't, nigga that make drinks, nigga. You, uh, you was a star tender of gratitude. Why would I be making drinks in jail? You gonna say a lie? Uh, are you lying? On you gonna me, say here a lie? I had a lot of jobs, but that wasn't one. You ain't never made no thug passes or sex in the cell. <laughs> sex in the cell. <laughs> Laying on the lawn with Sean. That wasn't just on the beach. No, yeah, but you was making sex, sex in, the in the cell. cell. No, I don't know what you talking about. I want you making no sex yeah, in the cell. Nigga had a joint called Sex in the Cell. That was his specialty too. Yeah, I mean, then a nigga called me last night, right? Talk about yo, cuz. Now tell me this ain't some shit. Yeah, I feel good, man. Just got out of the shower, threw some powder on my chest, about to take, take it down. I said, I said, powder on my chest. I said, what? I didn't tell you that. I said, I'm laying down. I ain't I saying said, that dumb shit. Nigga said he threw some powder on his chest. Oh, I said, man. I, like, that's, that's some, some real old shit. school shit. Yeah, that's ain't old it? school as a mother. That's some old school yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh it, man! Nigga came home. He wanted to get a job at Starlands in New York, but I told him he was yeah, cause I make the drinks. Cause I'm telling you, you I go, I, I go platinum. I, I go, said I wanted to go I'll to be Starlands. I'd be the man if I work at Starlands. <laughs> This man keep lying on my I jacket. I said, man, man. Ain't buying no, I ain't buying no land on the lawns and showing with Sean at Starlands. You nut ass nigga. Hey, let's get into a million dollars worth of game, right? So, a girl hit me up. She said, my boyfriend and I have been together for seven years now. We've been on and off our relationship in, in the years. We working things out, but now he told me after I asked him that he's not in love with me, but he loves me. <laughs> I feel like why be together if you're not in love? Then he keeps saying it to me, reminding me like this is something I wanna hear. I don't know what to do, Gilly, what you think. Well, I think when you're in a relationship with a person for, you know, a long period of time, that uh, everybody that's in a relationship for a long period of time is not in love. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes that in love uh, stem burns out. 
You feel what I'm saying? You think a person that's been together for, for 40 years, they all, oh, uh, they, no, they don't get no butterflies in their stomach no more, none of that shit. Some people that's been together for a long time, they don't even like each other. <laughs> but they understand that we make it work together. And they understand that, do I really want to start over and see if the grass is green on the other side of the f fence when I know it's probably not? So just because a, a person ain't in love with you, and they don't get all googly and they, they, the butterflies and they some, sometimes that shit get old, man. Sometimes you got motherfuckers that's in relationships. They wake up and look over at the partner and see them go, and they think, "Damn, bitch, you're still breathing." Mm -hmm. <laughs> God didn't take it. When is you gonna take this nigga to sleep? So, so it's all about, you know, if you got a partner that's sufficient for you, man, and that you can make it happen with. And that, you know, you work well with together. You know, in the beginning, it's love. Oh, I love you. I'm so in love. Oh, when I see you, my eyes light up. You make my heart break my dance. My heart break dance. Right, and all that. But after, after 10, 15 years, it might not necessarily still be you in love. It means, you know, I, I love you and we together. And, but, you, bitch, you're irritating. Or, nigga, you work on my fucking nerves. You feel what I'm saying? Do, do I not want to be with you? That ain't the case. I do want to be with you, but you just I'm just not at that point in time where I'm in love. I just love you. You feel there's a difference between being, oh, I'm deeply in love. Oh, I'm waiting for my woman to come home. As soon as she run through the door, I'm right there. Hey, baby. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in love is a lot of times overrated, man. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, he says he's not in love with me anymore. Well, he probably was in love with you for the first six years, and then last year, bitch, you started getting on his nurse. Mm -hmm. And he like, uh, I'm not really in love no more. I love you. I want to be with you. You still my baby. You still uh, you still my everything. But I'm just you. You know, my heart don't don't beat no faster. My, my, I don't get them little knots in my stomach like I used to. And that ain't no knock on him. That's just called getting comfortable and and and. and it's just like when you first get somebody, y'all sex game be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You can get that pussy whenever you want. Y'all live to get with each other and blaze each other. And then after, you get, after you get years in, shit, you, you got to ask for pussy. You know we ain't, you know we ain't getting, you know you ain't fuck me this week. Mm. Yep. So it don't mean that the woman don't care about you. It don't it just mean that she got comfortable. It don't mean that the man don't care about you. It don't mean that he don't love you. It just mean that he got comfortable. And sometimes comfortability is the worst ability. How is that? Do that make sense? That's a fact. Do that make sense? No. Oh, it don't. But y'all understand what I'm saying and shit. Sometimes I make shit up, but y'all still be understanding what I'm saying. So. You know, and love be oh he doesn't he's not in love with me no more. Some women feel like oh, a guy cheated he don't love me no more, or or a woman cheated oh they don't love me no more. No, uh, niggas love God and sin all the time. Mm -mm -mm. Talk to me. Mm. So that don't mean a do person. Do sex don't... got anything to do with love? <clears throat> yeah, no. You so know so so if you go have sex with somebody right now, you love them. No, 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 not on that. I'm talking about in the household. Yeah, you know in the household, talking? but I'm talking about like a lot of people try to. You saying if you go outside the household. No, no that was even, lust. You're not even in the household. Like what his woman went through was lust. It wasn't love. She never got a chance for, the, for meet the lover. The other nigga never got a chance. Minky never got a chance for, for, for her to love her. You feel what I'm saying? So it wasn't based off love. It was based off lust and something they wanted to do. You feel what I'm saying? Yo, what's your favorite Meek album out of all the albums? Bro, you wild as fuck. Hey, you wild as fuck. Hey, but I, like, hey, look, I fuck with dreams and nightmares, man. You know, really, he a real nigga for ants in there. Yo, I man. fuck with him, man. A lot of dudes would have been like, you know what I mean? A lot of niggas would have been trying to I, I, I heard you, I heard you, shoot Meek Phantom I, I, the fuck no, up. I heard you threatening the boy Minky, too. I heard you was driving around his way gritting on Nah, definitely. No, nigga. First, I could have blazed him right hey. there. He was scared to death. Hey, you know, you that nigga was you know, scared you know to death when I came through that door. He knew I was back then. He knew I was that he nigga. He was another ass nigga. But go ahead. That nigga was like, this. I told that nigga, get the fuck out of here. That nigga, you talk about. Did you cry? Was your eyes watery? Was your eyes a little watery? Like you yeah. were so hurt. You you know you know when I get mad, my eyes get like, like that. You know like I could be. Hurt. Nigga, was I hurt? <laughs> nigga, I did the bitch like Iron Sheik, man. Smell like sex in the house. No, no, that he was sitting on the couch. That don't mean fuck. 
The couch is the, that's the start. No, no, no. He that's was the action pack. No, he was saying, see, see, at the end of the day, I I knew when she got off work. I knew what time she got home and all that. So I was on the tip of like surprise, and I was the nigga so they, that was surprised. He was like surprise. Surpri- like, Su- surprise. You hit the door. You like huh? Shaking the door. <laughs> bitch had eleven. How long you had to shake the door? <laughs> bitch had eleven chain locks. How long on. you had to shake oh, the door? Oh, my key opened the door, but the door said boom. <laughs> it went this. Way. Look the fuck. What the fuck is going on? Bitch got eleven chain locks. How on. long did it take to open the door? It, 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 it took her a little second. Uh, oh, shit. You know, it wasn't to too me. long, though. It was like, I seen him when I opened the door. I seen her sitting on the couch. I'm like, yo, open the fucking door. Like, what the fuck is all these locks on the door? And then it was Bay like, it, 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 yeah, Bay Man was right Ricky up in Ricky Blazer. There. Yeah, Ricky Blazer, the donut glazer. He was right in this there. This is Ray Tone. I was like, you know, for me, man, you know what's real crazy is like, you know, just keeping it like a G. As men, though, right? We can go and do what we want to do. We go do our thing. We can fuck a, a, a hundred chicks. You know what I mean? But one one nigga fuck with your jaw and it's over. It just feel oh like you done God. completely been violated. It feel like a nigga a, stuck a fucking steak knife through your heart. Yeah, it's like, and that was and that was for me because like I, you know, I ain't gonna act like I've been innocent. Like I ain't do my right. own. You my was own. blitzing bitches like it was four for inches, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, just like Earl Thomas. <laughs> Earl Thomas in the news right now. Earl Thomas must have been at an Airbnb. Shout out to Earl Thomas, man. Great fucking safety, man. One of the best safeties that ever played the game. But I just seen in the news, he, he must have been at an Airbnb blitzing bitches like it was four and inches ball on the goal line. And this woman must have had a goddamn, uh, you know, a tracking on. device on him. She pulled up with the strap. He yeah. said that nigga Earl ran a three nine forty. He got right, the right. fuck right. out now, of question here. Is this. What do you do if your woman catch you with another woman? What's you run. Thing? You do what me and Earl did. Do you jump out of windows? You run. And a- you get the fuck away. You live to see another day. You gotta let that calm down because Earl bitch was going blazing. Yeah, she ain't, she, ain't she, no rap. She, she was going. She, she was going. Did hey, she start to shoot? No, but, she ain't shoot, but she no, had a strap. Because Earl, I just told you Earl ran a three nine forty. He broke the fucking record. Damn. You hear me? She was gonna blow Earl's fucking kneecap off, and Earl and his career was gonna be over because you know your nigga hit your kneecap is gonna you take done. at least four years to just learn how to walk. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, Earl did the right thing. He he, <laughs> he, he ran that three nine forty, got the fuck out of there, called her from where he was at. He apologized, he made sure she put that pistol away before he came home. You know what I mean? But like, like when I got caught, what I do when she when when she came to the you door? You ran. I got the fuck out of there. Yeah, I mean, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it different levels of women that you got to, like, you got to uh, assess the danger of when things go wrong, like the ones that threaten you? Some of them will threaten you in a relationship but let you know, like, you know how I kill you, right? You like, I'm keeping it all the way real. Like April you, got a pistol. So she'll, that put, she'll put that strap in your life. Listen, and then and then it's like, it's like, you can't do nothing, like, like, you could you could walk in and your woman could do whatever she want and you wouldn't be able to do nothing, nigga. You don't get off a road of twenty forty eight. They ain't got nothing to do with it. Oh, so you? So, no, so, I ain't saying I'm gonna activate my hand. I ain't uh, oh, that. fuck you! They ain't got nothing to do with it. Fuck you. Let us see another day. You Let us see you? another day, family. You heard my man told me. Uh, hey. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta just deal with that. Right. I mean, because I didn't I didn't tell April. I didn't hear April tell you plenty of times. Don't make me get them peoples in your life. She didn't say that. Yeah, she did. <laughs> April told you she sent you the fuck. Don't make me get them people. <laughs> you hear me? Let's talk about, and this is something he's talking about. Hustlers hustling. Let me break that down. I'm glad you said that. Everybody is on Instagram. I get the bag. I'm the trapper of the year. I do this. I do that. I do this. I do that. Stop saying that if you can't sell diarrhea ass to a toilet while he's on the toilet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> diarrhea. I'm talking about. Everybody quick to say that. A lot of things that we do, they hustle themselves. Like, you know, like, you know, dudes just be in jail, I'm a hustler. No, you're not. Drugs sell itself. Like, when you're not here, drugs still sell. Mm-hmm. Right. That still sell. Mm-hmm. Hustling is to be able to have the ability to have somebody buy something that they're not looking for. Right. And a lot of people can't do that. Right now, there's a great time to be creative. Uh, look at your house. Look at everything in your house. There's something in your house that you probably could, I'm not saying your personal stuff, but it's something that a product that people buy all the time. Look into that. Don't look into what everybody else doing, because you know we from, we good with like, oh Tony doing that, oh Gil doing that. Let me jump on that. Let me try. Just because it pop for them, don't mean it's the pop for you. Right. Because different people sell things. Personality sells more just as products. They mm-hmm. sell it just as much. And some people got the personality to make shit move. Whereas though, you had just as good of a product, but you don't have the personality to package it yep. around. So you know, when you talk about hustlers hustle, like if you a hustler out there, hustle then. I'm talking about you a hustler. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. You out there begging motherfuckers or asking somebody for something or needing somebody to do this, that, and the third. No, a hustler going to find a way. They're going to make it happen. And it's just like that. Yo, that's real, though, because a lot of people that I, I watch right now, like, 
they think that they got to have their life all the way together before they can, you know what I mean, start mm-hmm. doing something. Man, I, I, when I got out, I ain't have shit. Mm-hmm. So it was all hustle. Mm-hmm. Like how you get from, you know, bankrupt, no money, no car, no nothing, to being able to build yourself up to where people recognize you. And, and that's where I, I really try to be super transparent. I use my platform with, with extreme transparency because I want people to know like, yo, it don't matter, your shit don't have to be perfect. Right. Like life don't have to be perfect. You gonna go through some shit. It might not be what you anticipated it being, but never give up. Right. Like the, my persistence is like what's really changed the game for me. Not right. not feeling bad for myself. So many people go through shit right now. Mm-hmm. They everybody getting hit with this COVID nineteen. Everybody feeling bad for themselves. Right. I'm like, yo, the people that you got, like the people that really take this this opportunity to go and say, hey, let me get my hustle. Let me go out here and figure out a way to get paid why all this is going on and, and really not be, you know, sitting at home just bullshitting because everybody right now, you know, social media at an all time high. My mm-hmm. followers in the last month, I went to like 35,000 followers. Why? Right. Everybody bored, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So they rather scroll, mm-hmm. do all the bullshit, fucking around, instead of really going out here and, and getting paid and doing stuff that's gonna help them get paid. Right. Like everybody right now should be trying to find a craft or something that they can do and implement that's gonna help them do it and not look at, Oh, poor me. Right. Because for me, yo, that's what I said. I said, I wasn't gonna be no victim. Right. I wasn't even gonna let nobody look at me and say, hey, yo, he been through this, that, and the third. I'm not gonna, uh, fuck that. The victim route is real yeah. easy for everybody. Yeah. Oh, me. Oh, this happened. Oh, this. Shut the fuck up. Yep. Make it happen. Right. Yep. Yep. And, and, when, and, when, and when people see that, though, for real, like even your story, man, it, it resonates with me heavy because, you know, you, when, when you get on social media, like people can judge you for everything that you've been through, right? right. You go to jail, you got all, you know, all, all your back, you know, background shit going on. People can be like, nah, we're not messing with bro because he got this. And that's a, that's a self-limiting belief that a lot of people give themselves that they that keep them from going to do shit. Right. Like for me getting online, like my, my, my biggest following is women. Right. Like, so imagine me coming out here, like my first thing I was thinking, like before I got started it was like, yo, these women going to eat me up. Mm-hmm. They going to not fuck with me because I, I done fucked up. But and, you owned it. And I owned it though. And, and not only did I own it, I made it, I made it my, my story that I share openly so people can now use that as like, yo, you know what? I've been through something different. Right. I've been through something similar. And I can now use that to know that I ain't got to be, you know, labeled and give up on myself because I done went through some shit. Because right, there's a lot of rappers out here bleeding niggas bitches, man. Shout out to Meek Mill, man. <laughs> <laughs> Meek Millie! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know there's a lot of regular niggas bleeding niggas bitches. Shout out to Minky. You know what I mean? Bleeding my bitch back in the day, you know what I mean? Uh, but I, when I got hot, I doubled back and fucked his mom, so we even now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I bleed the shit out of his mom, so we even now. I'm just. <laughs> but listen, man, let's get into stories from the cell. Stories from the cell. Now, stories from the cell is brought to you by love. You know what's crazy? I found my way. I was a, I was a professional uh, pen paler in jail. I used to be on the websites and all that dumb shit. I'm be straight up with you. Because, you know, he used to have the Jones videos, though. Me to inmate.com. You throw a picture on there. You, now you take a little picture. You get your little, you have your nice browns on and all that. And listen, man, I ain't gonna hold you, man. You came up on that 63 old. That's how you met her, huh? No, no, not that. You be really. <laughs> <listen. laughs> that's what you gave her. She's she, listen, she listen, seen you all in your browns looking all. You, you talk some shit to her. Listen, huh? man. What'd you tell her? Listen. When I was knee high to a butterfly, baby, I always wanted the old head like you. No, what what you tell her? What you tell her? What you tell her? Me and the homeboy, another homeboy from across the pound pound, come to find out we talking in the yard went down. So I'm all, I'm all feeling this one, babe. She was from like Kansas or somewhere, right? Send you pictures and all this stuff. I'm feeling this one baby. I'm like, yeah, man, I got me a nice piece, man. I'm chilling, oh, man. Let me just say this, just for the record. If you on dataprisoner.com, you a lonely bitch. So listen. You the loneliest <laughs> bitch in the world. So listen. You's a loser. So I'm on the job, right? The fuck is wrong? I'm in the yard. I got some pictures of it, right? So I'm sure I'm like, yeah, this is my piece. I peeled bitch off the Bitch could go on right? Christian Mingles, Muslim Mingles. Bitch could go on a thousand websites. She on dataprisoner.com. Listen. Date wallow raggedy ass who got listen, 17 more years left. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm the type of motherfucking weird though. I'm in jail, man. I'm lonely. I'm like, damn, man, it's my baby right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I never met her in my life. I never even talked to her on the phone. We just writing all the time. We write a thousand letters to each other, right? So listen, I ain't even gonna lie. My one homie from a kind of pound pound, we in the yard one day. He told me, yeah, man, that John me the inmate that that John popping, man. I'm like, yeah, I came up, I gotta pull my peoples from off there, right? I'm claiming it ain't thinking this is my peoples, my bitch. I show him the jaw one time. He like, he look at me like, Kansas City. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, how you know what you know a girl? She done hit every no, person no, 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 Listen, jail. he like, be in the yard tonight. I'm like, yo, I come out this and third. He like, he like, no, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you the game. He come out, bring a stack of letters, all the pictures. 
the same letters, the same, same pictures. I'm like, my joint was like, man, yeah, it ain't about nothing. Fuck it, man. That was one of the joints I had to go sit on the bench, man, because I'm like, damn, I got a situation. I'm they cool. heard that, I heard you got a domestic violence joint in prison. That's when you beat him the fuck up in the cell. No, no, he wasn't my celly. <laughs> but it was just like. Yeah, but you took him in the cell and didn't even. It was you fucking like, with my no, bitch. Was, huh? yeah, no, we talking about hustling, right? It was people, right? It was people that were smart enough. And this was back like in the 90s. This is when that shit was popping. It was people that were smart enough, right, to create websites for people to get on whereas though you could put your picture on there so say it, anybody was doing this these was people homes that was doing it from the home like they set up a, a domain uh meet an inmate uh, uh this inmate something.com connect with the inmate, inmate connections and they had put that on get a url set up the site and you'll send them they'll send you a one sheet it'll be sometime they had little uh little uh what's some general, brochures or they had one sheets where it tell you you fill out the information you send your money you attach your little letter your little spill or whatever you was doing so you was fucking up picture. commissary money on and that. you send like $25 for like so I sent you packets. some commissary and you brought a brochure no, 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 of a no. bitch they had like $15 in hours, Fifteen hours for 6 months right $25 for a year nigga call me just, I ain't talk to you I ain't no money on my phone yeah cause you keep fucking buying brochures nigga got 1100 brochures you listen. oh my bitches I'm a player I ain't peep my old head right it was his boy that used to be in the yard right I mean, Latino boy with all that Ricky, Ricky, uh, that Ricky, Ricky Martin, Rico, Rico Swa, yeah, like that type boy. He always in the yard with his shirt off. <laughs> oh, he, he pay him some. Yo, man, listen, take a picture for me, man. When you go out of gym, I'm gonna pay you. He said, all right, cool. Take the picture. He sent that picture as him. So he on the page. He killing them. He, he lying. He, he did that shit. No, I ain't do that. <laughs> He sent the picture. I ain't do that. He sent the picture of Ricky Martin acting like it was you, huh? No, hey, listen. He write it some he, spicy he, shit. He killing, but listen, man. Right at prisoner dot com, that saved a lot of lives in jail, man. Did Prison it? pen pal. A lot of these women is listen. They was pen pals before, but somebody just hooked them up. That's all they uh, confront. Before we get out, of here, I just got one question. Have you ever like got past the picture of like somebody baby mom? Yo, I'm about to leave. Nigga, pass your picture. I got past no, pictures of dudes' okay. moms. Okay, hold on. Did you ever like? You know, you jerked off to him. You know, you squeezed. No, off I ain't to do him. that. I ain't do yes, that. Yes, you did. No, I did. Did you ever come home and see one? I'm like, yeah, I had you in prison. No, I told you I did that with like chicks. You listen, <laughs> like, tell- like you ever seen the, like a yo, I, hey, Wallow. I fucked you in prison. No, listen, listen. Bitch, I baked you plenty of times. No, I told you, IG chicks. <laughs> I hit the ceiling with you, bitch. No, I'm talking about <laughs> regular bitches. Like, you know how a nigga leave, he might give you his pictures. Huh, take these pictures, man. No, a lot of times it be regular. They give you the IG Jones, like, cause you know IG Jones was popping in my, like when they had. Dog, the I'm, you was in the jail since the <laughs> fucking nineties, bro. No, but at the end, that's when it really was popping. Them Jones was the best pictures that was coming through. You oh. get all the IG chicks, the booty girls on Instagram. You just be like, yeah, this is my girl, and then you'll come home, like, but you had them and you had chicks from your city, mm. so it'll be chicks. Uh, from that's your what city. I'm saying. Told you, you ever see a chick from your city? It's like, yeah, I told you, yeah. I, I, I hit that in prison, yeah, yeah. huh? Yeah. Did you really count it? Like, yeah, I fucked you already. It is a fucking count. That's a body count. I ain't. <laughs> I mean, anytime, anytime I'm able to have a happy ending, that's a count. That's all my jacket. <laughs> Fuck is mad with you. Hey, listen, man. We appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week, making us the number one podcast. Number one. Music podcast in the country. Listen, man, I got my nigga Tony Robinson right here. Check him out. Make Tell sure him what to Sunday, check him out. 3 o'clock. Man, I'm, I'm definitely tapping in. I'm about, to get a couple, com. I'm about to get a couple properties. 3 o'clock. Make sure y'all tune in because I'm, I'm about to sell a couple properties from the crib. You know what I mean? Rona proof. Yeah, man, all I, all I need is the game. All you got to do is put the game on me, and I'm going to activate the game. Oh, yeah, you telling me, you telling me Greg and all these niggas done made 96000 from the crib? Oh, <laughs> I only need 96. i I'll take a dub. I'll game take, time. I'll take 16. I'll take the 30s. I'll lead the 96s and all that to Greg. Shout out to Greg and all them. Yeah, listen, I'll take the 50. I'll take the small ones. I don't need the 96 when the 96 one pop up on me. I take That's that cool. motherfucker the one, too. The 118. The 118 and all the that. 73, shit, 42. If you, can, if you can hustle and you can make some money from the crib and a person going to give you Rona knowledge. Proof.com. That's all free. He going to give you game, got his attention, motivation, and education. That's all free. On the strength, you better sign up. You better sign up. You feel what I'm saying? 3 o'clock. Rona.com. Hey, Sunday. Ronaproof.com. Ronaproof.com. 3 p.m. Ronaproof.com. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tapping with my man Tony Robinson. As you know, he don't, he don't hold no grudges. Shout out to Meek. You know, he's still bumpy <laughs> shit. Shout out to Minka. We even. I fucked your mom. So, uh, <laughs> we, we even. And, uh, you know, we appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week. I go by the name of Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267. 
This is my man Tony Robinson. Check her. And it's just like that. Right! 